Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming my monthly eyeshadow palette ranking video. Every month I sit down and we talk about all the eyeshadow palettes I tried out in the previous month. I give you guys like little reviews, tell you where they rank. This is definitely one of the harder videos to film but also very very fun so if that sounds good to you highly recommend subscribing so you don't miss out and without further blabbering let's get into it If you guys are wondering about the makeup I'm wearing today, this is from the Lethal Cosmetics and Wildflower collection. So I will link my video down below. It was posted maybe a little while ago, so you might have to scroll back a little bit on my channel to see it. I'm probably going to post this video very, very close to my maternity leave kicking in. So if you're wondering why I haven't posted in a while, if you're new to my channel, just know that I will be back shortly. But we're currently having a baby and I really don't know how to navigate this terrain right now as a uh, YouTuber. So I'm just doing my best to put it out there so people aren't like confused. But I will be back as soon as I can because I love YouTube, I love posting makeup content, so please, if you find my channel, stick with me, subscribe so you don't lose me, and I will be back soon. Okay, let's go ahead and rank. I'm probably gonna get canceled, but listen, March was a good month. There was a lot of really good palettes that I tried out. I feel like I say that every month, but because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and rank the Italian Spritz palette in my bottom spot so this is number 12 from March and honestly I need to give this another go I just really wasn't motivated to try it after I tried it and honestly this is probably a good palette for a Too Faced palette it's been a hot second since I've tried one from them but I saw so many of my creator friends say that they really enjoyed this one I just I feel like I really kind of lean towards indie when it comes to eyeshadow. A lot of the other products I purchase, like foundations and stuff, I go with more mainstream brands or like brands that are sold at Sephora. But when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, I mean, I don't buy everything that's available at Sephora. Well, is that really true? I think so. I mean, I shop like Pat McGrath and... Natasha Denona and stuff like that, but for the most part, I definitely lean more indie. I think most of the brands in this video today are indie brands, but I didn't even buy this like when it first launched. I waited and I purchased it like after the fact and I was still disappointed, so I really have no one but myself to blame. I'm probably going to give this another chance or two, but yeah, I was just not very impressed with it, which meant I wasn't picking it up to try out. And so because of that, it definitely hit the bottom of the barrel. So you guys will have to let me know if you pick this one up and what your thoughts are because I'm always curious to hear what you guys have to say about palettes as well. In 11th place, I kind of just grouped these together because I don't even know if you can buy either of these anymore, but the brand Florasis reached out and they sent me actually two PR packages. So they sent me this one first and then they sent me like their Valentine's gift box or something like that which had this palette in it. So I finally tried the brand out because I was like, listen, I need to know. Like they do quite a bit of sponsored content on YouTube. My video was not sponsored, but I was just so curious because so many people talk about this brand and I'm like, is it actually good? And I find the quality really nice, but Again, it's a nice formula if you like a good neutral palette and you want like a beautiful wash of color on your lids. But for me, I mean, I like neutral palettes, but even with neutral palettes, I love very like opaque mattes and really beautiful like foiled eyeshadows. I really like the look I was able to create with the palettes and I think I would hold on to them because they are so beautiful and very special and they do feel very luxurious but at the end of the day they're not really like my style when it comes to eyeshadow palettes so I'm ranking them in the 11th spot. So in 10th place I'm gonna go ahead and rank 
the Wet n Wild and Sesame Street collection. This is honestly an adorable palette and I think for what it is, the eye look really turned out very nicely. I'm wearing this palette at the start of my neutral palettes with the twist video and I recently posted that and I was like looking at my eyeshadow and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's a Wet n Wild palette. So if you're balling on a budget, I mean, you can definitely achieve a decent look with this palette and I don't love the whole like it's good for the price excuse but I don't know how else to describe it because it is good for the price but I don't know would I pay like $45 for this no but I think it was retailing for like 15 which is more than what they usually charge I feel like for wet n wild makeup but I'm guessing since it's a IP collection it's probably a little bit more so I feel like the drugstore is killing it though. I mean, e.l.f. has been launching some really good eyeshadow palettes, just really good products in general. And I feel like this is so cute. And honestly, I don't go too crazy for IPs, but Sesame Street has a very special place in my heart. So I definitely had to grab this one. Okay, in ninth place is another one that I kind of ranked a little bit lower just because of the color story. So this is the Unbreakable Bond palette from Sydney Grace. And they actually have a light version and a dark version of this palette. I did use the dark version and it's a neutral palette. I will say there is another neutral palette that I'm ranking a lot higher in this video that just gives it to me the way this palette doesn't. So I love Sydney Grace. Their stuff is such good quality. They're an amazing women-owned indie brand and I love supporting them, but this one just didn't really inspire me in that way. You know what I mean? Okay, in eighth place, this palette is so impressive. I think it's so cute. Did it need to be a nine pen palette? Probably not, but I thought it was a cute idea. So this is the Huda Beauty Matte Obsessions palette and this is the cool tone one. So it's really a pretty mauve tone palette and just an easy little grab and go thing and I believe I actually got this in February when I reviewed it but I also used it this month to pair with another palette you guys will see kind of towards the top of this video but this is a nice palette the quality is good I wasn't as blown away by the warm tone palette from Huda and her obsession series but I'm happy I picked this one up and I really like it, so let me know if you guys pick this one up as well. Okay, in seventh place, we have a All Shimmer palette. This is a really cute palette, but I understand that All Shimmer palettes are not for everyone. I do really like them because I feel like I have a lot of mattes that I love, so I can combine it with the shimmers. And this is the Don't Forget to Smile palette from Sugar Drizzle. They did send this to me. Very, very pretty. I did use this in a video where I played with this palette and the ColourPop shadow sticks. So if you guys didn't see that one, highly recommend checking it out. Great formula and Sugar Drizzle always does these sparkly eyeshadow palettes at a great price point. So highly recommend checking it out. Also, I will try and link everything in a pinned comment down below in case you guys are interested in shopping. Sometimes I have affiliate codes with brands or I have affiliate links. So if you want to support my channel, that's a free way for you to do it at no additional cost. Obviously, don't feel any pressure to shop, but I like to let you guys know because sometimes people just don't know that you can use links and codes and stuff like that. And of course, watching my video all the way to the end also really helps me, but that is ranking at number seven. And then this is the neutral palette I was referring to that I think is just fabulous. This is the Ace Beauté Smoky Roses palette and I'm so bummed that they only released this as like a limited edition thing. I don't think this is coming back. My daughter was in my makeup room the other day and she definitely like stabbed her little finger in there. <laughs> Which is why she's not usually allowed in here. I think she gets to come in here like every once in a while and I just like see what she's doing and she was actually in here today and oh my gosh her eyes just like lit up and I knew that was the time to evacuate because I'm like nope 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 you're not getting your hands into something but I mean yeah it's it's special because she dented it in a very special way but this is a stunning 
neutral palette and the metallics are gorgeous. I will say that Ace Beauté recently launched their floral collection and that one has a very beautiful neutral palette in it. So if you like the Ace Beauté formula, I would recommend checking out the neutral palette that they just launched because this one is not coming back from what I understood. Okay, in fifth place is a palette that has been around for a while. And I actually bought this when it launched, but it was sitting in my purgatory bin and I finally tried it. So this is Unearthly's collaboration with Chippa Grey. And oh my gosh, this palette is so beautiful. Holy moly, I definitely slept on this palette. It's got some really pretty rainbow shades, so it's not really like they reinvented the wheel, but if you are a person of color and you're looking for some pigmented eyeshadows that'll actually show up on you, I mean, obviously I'm not the deepest skin tone, but for me this worked really well, so I would hope that it would show up on women of color as well that are darker than me because it was created in collaboration with a woman of color but holy smokes I was blown away by these mattes I was like so mad that I had waited so long to try this palette so definitely recommend scooping this up if it's still available on Honored Please website okay in fourth place is another stunning palette so I actually just went and saw Dungeons and Dragons the movie with my husband and this is the Rogue palette from Fantasy Cosmetica. I think this is my favorite palette from them because the shimmer shades in this palette are so beautiful. Oh my goodness and I think they just picked the perfect color combo for this one. Everything pairs so well together. It's almost like a neutrally like cool tone but like just like so beautiful and like a fantasy palette so I think they did a really really good job with this one and I'm so happy that I have it with me. Okay in third place this is another oldie this one came out last year and my friend Heather Austin would not stop raving about the strange and unusual palette from Bella Beauté Bar so listen this palette is constantly on pre-order and the thing is when you're a youtuber sometimes it's hard to get any views from older palettes and some palettes do get sent to me but I do purchase a lot of makeup myself as well with my YouTube money and so when it's on a pre-order for like six seven eight weeks you know by that time by the time I get the palette nobody's interested then I put it in my purgatory pile and I like never end up playing with it so all of that to say that Bella Beauté Bar happened to post on their Instagram that they actually had some of these available for shipping immediately because they had like reserve stock that they were keeping in case there was any damages and I was just like oh my gosh let me just finally get this palette it's so cute it's such a beautiful color story so I'm glad that I finally got to try another palette from Bella Beauté Bar because I had bought a palette from them at the beginning of 20 22 I think and it was not very good and so this one definitely redeemed them they've gone through a few formulas I think and now this is like their new formula so I'm very excited to try something else from them so yeah this is a really nice palette and I really like the color story too if you guys are interested in that and then technically I tried all of these palettes I think I did multiple videos I can't remember <laughs> listen my brain is mush okay but the brand Cosmic Brushes did launch their Muse palette this year and I also did a look where I combined these because I didn't own the Royal Rose palette and she actually sent that one to me so I did all three of these together so I'm ranking the Muse palette in second place but technically I did use all three of these palettes in this look this is such a cute UK based indie brand and I just feel like they don't do a lot of stuff but their stuff is so interesting and cool and the price point is great as well. This is the first palette I tried from them. This is such a cool color story and now they have the Muse. I don't think they're bringing Royal Rose back so if you are interested in this color story and it's still available definitely feel free to snag it but yeah these two palettes this one came out last year and it's like so many people's favorite for very good reason and now we have another one to talk about so 
Love that for me, and that is in second place. And now the star of the show in number one, I have this beautiful palette from Nomad Cosmetics. This is the Royal Europe palette. I wasn't really sure if I was going to be like that excited about this palette because it is some really deep jewel tone matte shades. And then the bottom row is all multi-chromes. But honestly, this is like so beautiful, first of all. The packaging is honestly so cool. Like, I really love how Nomad just keeps, like, improving. Seeing brands, like, kind of top themselves is, like, such a highlight for me. So this has, like, layers upon layers of, like, cardboard to look like little gemstones. It's just so intricate, and it's very, very cool. And then the theme, I think, is very interesting, and they're focusing on, like, different castles in Europe. And the color story is absolutely stunning. I just love it so much, and I don't really think I have anything else like this in my collection. So it's honestly kind of idiot-proof because you can just go down each row and create an eye look. They've kind of laid it out for you. Otherwise, if you're feeling adventurous, you can definitely, like, mix and match. But I think I did a few looks with this palette. I can't quite remember, to be honest. But... This is such a good palette. The formula is great. The multi-chromes work really well. So I really enjoy this. And that is why it is in my first place for the month of March. Okay, you guys, I hope you enjoyed my eyeshadow palette ranking for this month. Thank you for checking it out. I know it's up kind of late, but... I'm just like, you know, trying to get everything done before baby comes and I will definitely film a monthly ranking for April, even if it's going to be short and sweet or I might combine it with May. Honestly, I don't really know what the future holds right at this second. I mean, <laughs> I did the best I could. I definitely, definitely try to film until the very end. <laughs> So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys for hanging with me, and I will see you in another video, hopefully very soon. Bye for now.